everyone, and welcome to the 2020-2021 OREA Awards. So normally the awards have been held uh, December the 10th, or close to that, which is the uh, UN's uh, International Human Rights Day. However, this year, like many things else, we've kind of shifted it over and uh, been able to do something virtually. And so we chose uh, February the 26th which is close to February the 20th, which is the UN's uh, International Social Justice Day. So it's particularly important that we recognize uh, social justice and uh, that we also recognize the work that's being done to move towards social justice, both in our local area and much broader. So we also recognize that our world has a very long way to go. We recognize the anti-Black racism we recognize the anti-Indigenous racism, and we recognize racism against other racialized groups. That's very much systemic throughout our society. Also recognizing homophobia, transphobia, um, ableism, and um, other kinds of oppression that are there throughout our society and such. And that it's very important that we work towards eradicating these things and that we also uh, move towards a society where people are recognized and not just celebrated because we don't want to just celebrate people without being able to have true uh, meaningful uh, membership in our society where people feel valued and feel respected and such. So that's the society where we're moving towards. And so today we'd like to recognize the uh, UN's Day for Social Justice and that we recognize the work that people have been doing on our campus and such. So um, the ARIA Awards, and they recognize the celebration and celebrate the contributions and such uh, by individuals and by groups um, who advance human rights, social justice, employment equity, um, inclusion, diversity and accessibility um, throughout our campus and throughout our society and such and throughout the unit. So we, uh, we welcome you again and um, we will move on then to the uh, rest of our, of our ceremony today and we hope you enjoy our virtual event. Thank you. We'd like to recognize that the University of Windsor sits on the traditional territories of the Three Fires Confederacy, the Ojibwa, the Ottawa, and the Potawatomi. As we recognize the land, we recognize the importance of coming together and working together for social justice for Indigenous peoples throughout Turtle Island. Hello, I'm Rob Gordon, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Windsor. It's my distinct pleasure to welcome uh, you to the seventh annual Office of Human Rights Equity and Accessibility Awards. This year, in addition to holding our ceremony virtually, the ARIA Awards have been moved to coincide with the week the United Nations is marking World Day for Social Justice, Saturday, February the 20th. It is fitting that social justice be at the heart of the ARIA Awards and indeed all we do at the University of Windsor. The ARIA Awards provide an opportunity for the campus, retirees, and the community to come together and learn about uh, the work being done to advance human rights, equity, and accessibility at the University of Windsor. It's also a chance to reflect on how far we've come and how much further we have to go in creating a world that is fair and equitable for all. It's exciting for me to see how many students, graduates, staff, faculty, units and departments have made creating positive change integral to what they do every day. Not just within their workplaces on campus, but by carrying that positive spirit into the community. Today's ARIA Award winners will join an impressive group of past recipients whose causes and work are as extensive as they are impressive. The achievements of this year's winners are no less stellar. These award winners and the work they advance proudly and vividly demonstrates the University of Windsor's vision into reality, where the challenges of communities and of a world in transition inform the education we provide, the research we do, and the creative endeavors we pursue. 
These awards and the people who will be receiving them today are a testament to our university's mission to enable people to make a better world through education, scholarship, research, and engagement. To all the recipients, both past and present, thank you for creating change. I'm pleased to present this award, which is given to those who have contributed to increasing accessibility on campus. Accessibility can be improved by adjustments to physical space, improved customer service, contributions to accessible education, training and awareness, supporting accessible employment, and finally, creating more accessible information and communication on campus. This year, one of our University of Windsor students, Sarah Richards, was selected for the Accessibility Award. Sarah devoted her final year in the Drama and Education and Community Program to research accessibility in theatre. She is committed to normalizing relaxed performances so that live theatre can be accessible to everyone. This research gave her the opportunity to work on creating a relaxed performance of Beauty and the Beast performed by the university players. She explored sensory-friendly features on the theatre to create an experience that people with disabilities or anyone with sensory needs can enjoy. Sarah's enthusiasm for accessibility is truly contagious and her drive to create inclusive experiences in our university community and our community at large makes her most deserving of this award. Congratulations. Hi there. I just wanted to start by saying how honored and excited I am to be receiving this award. I was really lucky to get to work with University Players, which is the theater on campus, to make this relaxed performance a reality. Um, Theatre has always just given me such wonderful experiences and I believe that everyone should be able to take part in a sensory friendly environment that's comfortable for them. So I really hope that the university continues to make relaxed performances an option for audiences to make the theatre going experience as accessible as it can be. Um, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to my professor, Dr. Michelle MacArthur. Thank you for your support and guidance over this project. It would not have been what it was without you. And I also wanted to say a quick thank you to my classmates, specifically Zara. Thank you for all your support and help on this project. Thanks again. The Employment Equity Award is given to those who have contributed to the advancement of employment equity at the University of Windsor. The Faculty of Human Kinetics at the University of Windsor has demonstrated a strong commitment toward advancing employment equity by example from their long-standing Human Kinetics HK Equity Committee, which has recently been renamed to the EDI Committee, where EDI stands for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. The committee is made up of staff, faculty, and student members within their faculty. The newly named EDI Committee addresses issues of gender inequity in sport, facilitate a safe, productive, educational environment for all members in the Faculty of Human Kinetics through practices designed to eliminate discriminatory barriers regardless of gender, sexuality, age, ethnicity, race, status, and ability. The EDI Committee reports to the Dean of the Faculty of Human Kinetics and with the approval of the Dean has successfully contributed to several initiatives. For instance, they have implemented the use of the diversity and equity assessment and planning tool for both their academic and administrative areas as a method to establish and monitor unit specific goals, outcomes and timelines. Also, they helped promote the education and training for faculty and staff professional development within the area of equity, diversity and inclusion. We would like to congratulate each member of the EDI committee for their dedication and accomplishments toward advancing employment equity at the University of Windsor. On behalf of the Faculty of Human Kinetics, Equity, Diversity and Inclusivity Committee, I would like to thank the Office of Human Rights, Equity and Accessibility for this recognition, students, through practices designed to eliminate discriminatory barriers, regardless of age, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, race, status, and or ability. I would like to acknowledge the founding efforts of Dr. Marjorie Holman and the continued support of Dr. Victoria Parishak, Dr. Kevin Milne, and our current Dean, Dr. Jess Dixon. We will continue as a faculty through the partnership of the Department of Kinesiology and the Division of Athletics and Recreational Services to create a welcoming and inclusive environment for students to learn, recreate, and compete. 
Thank you. The Human Rights and Social Justice Award is given to those who have contributed to fostering a culture of respect for human rights at the University of Windsor, or have worked toward the advancement in the university community of social justice at the local and global level. Christina Bonham is a fourth year student in the Law and Politics program at the University of Windsor. She is recognized for her great achievements as an ambassador for the University of Windsor and in the Windsor Essex community. Christina dedicates her free time to mentoring fellow students, assisting with social justice research projects, taking on student leadership opportunities at the university, and advocating for human rights causes. Christina began a leadership role within the university during her first year. She was the president of the Society of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, the president of WE Students United, and president of the Model United Nations Club. She continues to be acknowledged for her outstanding engagement in charities and community volunteer work. We would like to congratulate Kuchina for her dedication to fostering a culture of inclusivity, and not only at the University of Windsor, but well beyond our campus community. Diane, thank you so much. This is such an honor. Um, when I first heard I received this award, I had a bit of an imposter syndrome moment, um, thinking and reflecting on all the incredible student leaders on campus and the work that they've done for community, and I couldn't help but think, why me? And it's moments like these where I'm reminded just how important the journey is. I'm still 21 and have so much more fight left in me, so much more time. And for that, moments like this serve as a promise and commitment that I will continue to fight for human rights and against, against environmental racism and injustice. And I'm going to use my privileges to always fight for Black, Indigenous, and other racialized folks that have been impacted by environmental racism and injustices. And as I make this promise, I need to reflect on how I got here. When I was 13, I witnessed my mom's struggle with thyroid cancer, something that was due to levels of air pollution in Windsor. And as I grew older, I became more interested in the connection between environmental harms and health. I went on a backpacking trip to Northern India in 2018, focused on environmental justice. And I worked with local nonprofits to reforest lands in the most polluted areas in New Delhi. It was there that I discovered the disproportionate distributions of environmental harms on those experiencing homelessness and those living in poverty. So when I came back to Canada, I began looking into similar cases and discovered just how guilty Canada is for cases of environmental racism. And the cases are truly endless. Chemical Valley, Africville, polluting industries have concentrated in Black and Indigenous communities across the country. And as a result, Black and Indigenous folks have experienced greater health risks and harm, many of which are life-threatening. I've made it my mission and my purpose to fight against environmental racism and to do this I'll be pursuing a degree in law with a concentration in environmental and human rights law. My current thesis is also on environmental racism in Canada and how to hold the federal government accountable. Now before I end this, I just need to quickly thank some folks in my life who continue to encourage me and inspire me. To my best friend, Megan Gregoire, thank you for being the light that you are and inspiring everyone around you to fight for justice. To Dr. Cheryl Collier, thank you for continuing to support me and encourage me to work towards my goals. You are an inspiration to me and so many others. And finally, to Dr. Ingrid Waldron, even though I've never met you, um, <laughs> thank you so much for um, all of your work and for educating so many people like me on environmental racism in Canada. I promise to work to end the systems of oppression that have allowed this to persist. So thank you so much. I'm so, so appreciative. Thank you, Aria. Um, this means a lot. I'm pleased to present this next award, which is given to those who have contributed to engaging students, faculty, or staff in removing the stigma associated with mental illness, removing barriers for inclusion, along with recognizing and promoting mental health well-being. This year's Mental Health Champion Award recipient is a University of Windsor alumni, Frank Renna. Frank was an athlete for the University of Windsor's football team prior to playing professional football with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. He has worked with the University and the Windsor Essex community at large to promote mental health well-being in order to remove the stigma by engaging in public speaking opportunities. Frank's public speaking is motivational. 
While focusing on holistically healing himself, he shares his own life experiences with mental illness. Frank spreads positivity throughout the community by viewing his diagnosis as a gift. His candid conversations contribute to breaking down stigma associated with mental health. Frank embodies all the key elements of a mental health champion, making him a perfect fit for this award. Congratulations. Hello, my name is Frank Reno, and I'm a graduate of the University of Windsor, former varsity football player, Winnipeg Blue Bomber, and I was nominated and gladly accepted the nomination for the Mental Health Champion Award. I want to thank the Office of Human Rights equity accessibility for the nomination and the award. Thank you to the nomination committee, everybody behind the scenes who made this all happen. I got a message on LinkedIn. Somebody said they wanted to send me an email and I was freaking out, what do you want? And they sent me this, I'm like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. So that's fun. Um, mental health, what is mental health to me? Mental health is a way of being. Mental health is a, is a, is a state of mind and it's something that we all have an opportunity to work on. And so now I'm here. When I go back to the beginning of the adventure, the true beginning, when I was diagnosed with bipolar, it was a death sentence. I was told I would be on medication for the rest of my life and everything in between. And I chose to take a unique path of my own off of medication to take a look, a deep introspective look at my ways of being inside that would express outwardly. And I started finding out that a lot of my mental health issues were based on trauma that had occurred to me long before this explosion or opening up of myself had occurred. And so what I see possible for mental health now moving on into the future is that the stigma no longer holds us back. And the way I see the stigma is I see that we have separated mental health and mental illness and people who may have been diagnosed with everybody else. And, what I believe and what I will put forward is that we are all one and we're all the same. The stigma separates. There should be no stigma because everybody experiences battles in different ways. And what I'm very excited for, you know, as a mental health champion is that I get to show people that you can go into the dark and you can come back out and rise up stronger than ever. There was, there was a point in all of these battles that I was going through and mind you, internal battles that I realized that wow, these battles were created by myself. Nobody else can see them. So if they were battles that I created by myself, they're battles that I can overcome. So I appreciate the nomination. I want to thank everybody again, who's responsible for this entire show and everything, you know, this is fun. This is fun being a mental health champion and being recognized as one is kind of cool because I truly feel like I am and I, and I aspire to share these messages and show everybody that everybody's a mental health champion. You know, everybody has the opportunity to overcome the battles as warriors of their own land. And I wish that for you. I wish that for everybody who sees this. And I can't wait to share more in the future. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Happy day, whatever day. Thank you. Our final award is the OREA Award, which is the overall award. This is given to those who have contributed to the advancement of culture, diversity, and inclusivity at the University of Windsor. This award may include aspects of accessibility, employment equity, diversity, human rights, social justice promotion, and so on. This award is being awarded to the Letty Library. So a few examples of some of the things that they have done. The, a recent highlight is the Indigenous Resources Collection. They also have the Wampum Belt uh, Initiative, where they have the Dish With One Spoon Belt and the Two Row Wampum Belt. These are available for staff and faculty to sign out to do presentations and for classroom teaching in a variety of initiatives. They also regularly do displays and exhibits that bring about awareness for specific uh, awareness months or celebratory or commemorative months. And, uh, and some examples are the Celebrating Black Authors. They had a pride display, which was called Read the Rainbow. They had sort of International Women's Day and a variety of other initiatives. They also have an accessibility, uh, accessibility study room with access to a laptop and specific um, accessibility software. And 
hold regularly uh, English, English conversation groups, a safe space for international students to gather and use their voices and share their voices and ask questions, whether it be about language or cultural things. So these are just some of the highlights and we'd like to commemorate, to commend them for the tremendous work that they've been doing that's been recognized both locally and nationally and internationally. Congratulations again to Letty Library. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pascal Calarco. I'm the University Librarian at the Lenny Library. I'm so pleased to accept this campus award for our efforts to make Lenny Library a more inclusive, diverse, and equitable place for our users and employees. Lenny staff and librarians are deeply involved in the work of physical accessibility in the library and web accessibility with our collections and scholarly content. We have made efforts to recognize and honor this area's Indigenous people in our spaces, such as in the collaboratory, our collections and services, and recognize and promote the successes of Black athletes in Canada through the Breaking the Color Barrier project, Southwestern Ontario's Queer History and Culture with the U Windsor Digital Archive Project to highlight queer stewardship and help tell the story of past social injustices through our community service-based research and partnerships. We are committed to Letty Library being an inclusive and respectful campus hub. Thank you for this recognition of our continuous work in these areas. Stay safe, you Windsor. Thank you. So thank you for joining us for this year's OREA Awards. We hope that you've enjoyed the ceremony. We also uh, are very happy to have this opportunity to recognize the contributions of those uh, throughout the year who've worked very hard. It's not just the uh, people who have been awarded this year, but we also want to uh, to say, um, uh, express our appreciation to the work that others have been doing across campus. Um, to those throughout the university community and that as we celebrate the individuals and the groups that uh, we've celebrated today, uh, we also would like to recognize the work that is being done across campus. OREA would also like to thank the many committees that work throughout the year to create a more inclusive and welcoming learning environment. We'd also like to say thank you very much for the donations uh, to Hiatus House, which is the fundraiser target for this year. We'd like to thank everyone who's donated so far. And if you like, you can still donate. There's still some time for the next uh, couple of days or so. And then, of course, always feel free to donate uh, um, at any time after that. Again, thank you so much. And thank you to the students who've worked in our office throughout the year. And also thank you to the students who worked in our office last year. Normally, we have a, a, a thank you brunch. Uh, but of course, this year, since nothing can be done in uh, in person that's uh, changed for now but we would like to express our appreciation so thank you all again for coming out and enjoy the rest of the day